Welcome to Geek's Corner, I'm Mr. Daps. I'm Katie. And we are live from the middle of nowhere. Yeah, we're in the Gulf of Mexico. We thought things were going to go differently. They did not. <laughs> As it always happens. Currently, the ship is going kind of like this, mm -hmm. back and forth. I don't think you'll be able to tell with this shot, but things are a little bit weird on this. It's been raining. It's been very, very windy. I'm looking out the window, out on the balcony, and I can literally see the railing go from above the horizon <laughs> to quite below the horizon and you see all water and uh, it's very fun like this uh, it's is honestly great. a good time um, there's definitely bags for people who aren't having such a good time on all of the, uh, <laughs> staircases. the staircases as you go around the ship there's also um, there's also some other interesting things that you keep getting announcements which we might get as we're going on this adventure of, of Geek's Corner on the Sea. Oh, I like that. Geek's Ooh, Corner on Geek's the Sea. Geek's Corner on the <clears throat> Sea. I like that. Yeah, but you might get an announcement of, uh, of hold on to handrails and be careful <laughs> in elevators because it is weird to have an elevator go like this. Like that's... It is. It's very strange, honestly. Mm. And um, I think the funny thing about us that we have learned about ourselves, uh, we've been on this cruise since Sunday. I had to think about days. I had to think about what day it was when we got into the elevator because they have little day things. Um, we will take the stairs going down. We don't take the stairs going up. Because... Unless it's only a couple levels. Yeah, if it's a couple levels, that's fine. But if it's five like... levels down, no problem. Ten yeah. levels down, no problem. But up not the same very different story yes so that's that's been a very interesting thing to see and uh to see yes to but see on the sea also doing stairs when you're when the boat is doing the ship my bad when the ship is doing this is an adventure it really is Do but i like that adventure better than the elevator doing this it's not fun um we've had to go up a few times because food that is true but yes while we've been having some fun on the ocean, Southern California has been having its own kind of fun as an atmospheric river has drenched, deluged, I don't know what the word is, but it is wet in Southern California the last few days. And that means a very different Disney experience if you can even get in because the roads are so messy and, and you're not going to Knott's Berry Farm because that closes. And, um, and in, in fact, Disneyland has closed early because of it. And that's always crazy too. But as we think about this, cause we're not dealing with it this time, <laughs> uh, thankfully Doug and Roger and a couple other people have been sending and uh, Angela have been sending us photos and videos of what has been happening in the parks as they get doused on mainly from Sunday. But my question for you, Katie, what is the very best thing? And let us know in the comments to do in the rain at Disneyland when it is pouring. Not just a light rain, but what we're talking about is pouring down the rain, rain, rain came down, down, down. The rain, rain, rain came down, down, down. Mm -hmm. I think one of my favorite things, um, one is to actually walk around in it. I know that that's not a popular opinion. I know people want to stay out of it, but I genuinely enjoy, I'll bring like a waterproof jacket, shoes or not um preferably that's what i do i said i don't want to be soaked to my bones um and i just enjoy it and then my second favorite thing is to grab like a warm pretzel or like a slice of pizza like something warm and very like hearty soup also works for this soup um and then for soup corner and then just um eat it somewhere where you can people watch um, and I know that we talk about people watching a lot. I know we say it all the time, but especially on rainy days, um, you see people's personalities come out and it's like, how do they handle the rain? Do they enjoy it? Do they not enjoy Are it? Are they just leaving? <laughs> Are they on vacation? So they feel like they just have to make the best of it. It's, it's extremely entertaining to watch. And you also find really cute moments of families, um, the parents that are making the best of it with their young kids that are like, we'll have fun and we'll play in the rain. Um, or the thing that we're currently doing with my best friend Hopper um, is every time it rains, which has been a lot in the last few weeks, she sends us a video of her either slow motion or regular uh, splashing in a puddle, mm -hmm. which is 
pretty magical. Uh, but I also imagine what that looks like to people that are like walking by her. So, <laughs> cause you know, run away. Yeah, <laughs> they're like, like oh, don't splash me. The the crazy lady is splashing. Mm -hmm. um, but no, those are some of my favorite things for sure. Um, just because I personally love rain. Um, I know that we've gotten it a lot on this trip so far of like, oh, what's the weather like in Southern California? Because people always expect that it's like sunny and palm trees and like uh, everything that looks like those commercials where it's like relaxation and Little beach chairs. And, and so we said, oh, it's actually pouring rain. Like, oh, so you're missing it. That's great. And I'm like, I'd like to see it. I wish I would. Mm -hmm. But like, I like to preferably when it's this bad i love to just stay home read um play games um indiana does have other plans so. indiana does enjoy the rain we do not have an indie cam this week no. just because we're filming straight through and and that doesn't work so well when you're out in the middle of the gulf of mexico with uh, 12 foot waves but that is okay he is enjoying the rain right now though mm -hmm. we have been getting pictures from my sister-in-law um, he's having just the time of his life. He is with his puppy mom, puppy dad, and his puppy little sister. So he's having just... Who's a... being her best, or his best buddy. He's having a great time. It so is true. Take our word for it. As for me, I like to grab a cup of coffee, go oh. on the Disneyland Railroad, or the Mark Twain. Like, mm -hmm. Mark Twain actually can be a lot of fun. Mark I remember Twain's fun. one night on the Mark Twain years ago, it was raining so hard, it was like waterfalls <laughs> off the side of the boat as we were going around mm -hmm. the Rivers of America, and that was hilarious. And then there was puddles on the deck inside the Mark Twain, which was also equally hilarious. And uh, that was a very memorable night with huge puddles throughout the park. And I think that was the night a tree fell down, too. I can't remember exactly. Oh, but, that's um, right. But uh, it, it's it's always an adventure when the weather changes just because we're not used to the weather changing in Southern California. And uh, so anything changing is good, right? Yeah, it's fun. But, um, but it's also interesting because they change how they do things operationally. So, you know, obviously there's the things that you expect to happen of, of Mad Tea Party closes down and and you're not gonna go on some of those outdoor rides because it's insanity. And then there's the people that do go on Big Thunder Mountain or Incredicoaster and, and just get the water hailing into your face. And that's good for you. I've done it a couple of times. It's not my favorite, but you know, once you've done it, you've done it. They typically close those attractions <clears throat> in weather, but there are times when it's like, either the rain is just starting or just ending and those outdoor attractions are open. Um, Having done Credit Coaster in the rain, I can't recommend it personally. It hurts. But it's funny. <laughs> it uh, is funny. And then they also change where characters may or may not mm -hmm. be found. Sometimes they just disappear. Otherwise, they get moved inside. So maybe the ones that would be in the courtyard are now in Fantasy Fair in the, the Royal Hall. Mm -hmm. Royal Hall? Fantasy Fair Hall. Um, often the ones that would be in town squares normally would get moved into the opera house exit, which is always fun because a lot of people don't realize they're in there. So they just keep walking on by and, uh, that's some of my favorite character memories actually is meeting, um, a, a specifically Donald on a rainy day because no one realized mm -hmm. that Donald was there. Um, and Donald does love attention. I don't know if you know this, but he is number one. Um, and so just again like that was a fun experience for me but also watching families enjoy those experiences because that's just not something you can replicate a lot of times and if you're over in disney california adventure you can hop into kingswell sometimes they'll be there often they'll be in the in that entry lobby thing before you get into the carthay circle restaurant mm. um it's kind of halfway in before you get to the restaurant and that first entryway they'll have uh, a couple characters often hiding in there if it's really bad you'll even find them in the animation academy sometimes in that building and that's really cool and uh and i do think you get a different experience well you do get a different experience just because the venue's different mm -hmm. there's a little bit of a different vibe because there's not that many people usually when the rain happens mm -hmm. and so it changes things if you're over at the hotels often you'll find characters i guess not often but sometimes you'll find characters in the lobby um, I think Bing Bong is meeting in the lobby 
uh, next to the Pixar lamp and ball mm -hmm. when it rains. And I think also other times it's looking like now too. I don't think um, we have that figured out exactly when and where he is all the time. I but. think that Bing Bong is simply such a wonderful figment of our imagination that he, he can just be anywhere. he can just be anywhere. That is very possible. Um, the only thing is that I just I personally hope mm -hmm. that Bing Bong isn't waiting to meet me when like I walk out of my um, hotel room. Personally, I think that would scare me a little bit. But <laughs> I just it I, would be funny. I had this like mental image and this is just telling you um, where I'm at is like you open the door Boom. and then you close the door and behind the door that was open, you're just oh. like bing bong. Just... Except you'd be like, yeah, <laughs> with his nose twisting around his face. <laughs> yeah. It's but yeah, funny. no. And uh, you have this like faint smell of cotton candy in the air and yeah. Mm -hmm. um, almost sounds horror movie-esque. <laughs> we could make a different kind of trailer. We had Running of the Goats a few years ago, and then you can make the Bing Bong scary movie. Um, <laughs> I just had an idea for the Dapsy. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You might have it. Um, that could be it. That is true. Um, I can't... I really wish you guys could feel... Like, this is or crazy. See how the boat, like, I think we're just moving with the boat, so you can't really tell that it's moving as much as it is, but... I think it's more now, so that's exciting. It, it is significantly more. Um, it's actually kind of wild. You know what we're going to do? What? We're, we're going to call an audible right here. Mm. We're, we're going to go like this. Mm -hmm. Hopefully not mess up the camera. All right, let's go for a ride. Let's make you all sick. <laughs> Hopefully not. And all right, so I'm putting this against the wall. All right, I'm holding it very steady so you can see how much it's moving. And hopefully this is working. It'd be kind of funny if they were just like, it's just the ocean, it's man. Not really, and, and it actually is not as big as it was a couple minutes ago. But I can even feel it. I'm standing in the center and I can still feel it. Mm -hmm. That's exciting, right? This is where we're a little bit weirder than... This, this is the adventure. The... And who knows if you could actually see it because it's on cinematic mode. So, yeah. you know, that keeps it interesting. We'll just put you back down here but for a ride. This is where. There we go. We are a little bit stranger than most average cruise guests. It's because everybody's like, oh, it's. Um, it's cold. It's pretty terrible. It's cold. There was a it's run windy. on sweatshirts this morning. They were people freaking out that they were going to run out of sweatshirts. So another lady was asking where the rain came from. Uh, that was very interesting, too. It just started pouring, and she's like, where is this coming from? And I was like, well, just look around. Like, it's definitely been coming. Um, we've made we've made acquaintances with uh, some people working on the ship. And uh, earlier, because we were, we've almost built a routine um, we got hot dogs for lunch mm -hmm. and there's this whole like, um, promenade, uh, kind of looks like Pier 39 if you know Which San Francisco. Which is very weird on a ship. It is, but there's like a Johnny Rockets, there's a carousel, there's some shops, there's, um, the aqua theater where there's a diving show. Um, which is going to be super interesting. I don't know how they do that when the boat's moving, but you know, um, They're just that good. But we'll see if it actually happens. Um, our server <clears throat> was saying something like, oh, are you guys going to take your things and then like run away? And we're like, no, we're going to go eat lunch. There's seats next to the Starbucks. Um, he was like, oh, everybody else has been complaining that it's so cold and it's so windy that they just get their stuff from me and then they run inside. Mm -hmm. I was like, no, I would... Uh, and it's honestly not that, it, like, it's a little bit cool, but it's more the wind. It just makes it feel cooler than it is, so it's not terrible. It's like 60-something. Um, it's not that cold. No. But. Uh, yes, that is true. All right. Well, also, beyond the wind and the rain here and also at the Disneyland Resort, there's wind and the rain happening for the Walt Disney Company as they have announced that in April they will be having their annual shareholder meeting, which will be the... I want to say final showdown, but it probably won't be the final showdown between Disney and Nelson Peltz, who is mm. trying to get his own two uh, board members, being himself and former CFO Jay Rusulo, 
I believe he was the guy behind uh, One World, One Park, or One Park, One World. I can't remember exactly how it went, but um, he was he was head of Parks and Resorts years ago, and then he switched with uh, Tom Staggs, and Tom Staggs took over Parks and Resorts, and Jay Rasulo went over to uh, CFO Land, and I really think the idea was to test them both out to see if they had the potential to be a future uh, CEO, and uh, obviously neither of them ended up in that role. But... Uh, Nelson Peltz would like himself and also Jay Rasulo to be board members for the Walt Disney Company. And Disney on its half is like, well, that's great, but why? And their argument is that Nelson has not given any strategic ideas. He just wants to change things. And so it's almost a change for the sake of change and because I don't like it. You know, it's it's almost the whole like... uh, um, I didn't like how we played the game, but I don't have a better way to do it, but I still want to run it. A lot of like football fans or soccer fans or Disney fans. Um, true. But the big showdown for this will be, I believe, April 3rd, and we will get to see if Nelson Peltz gets his two board members, being himself and Jay, on the Disney board, or mm-hmm. if the strongly worded, we don't want this, from the Walt Disney Company that says, no, we don't want you on our board of directors, is effective with the bunch of shareholders. Uh, Disney has made a deal with a couple of uh, other groups to try to maintain some votes, I think, and protect itself. But we're going to find out for sure on April 3rd. And I think this is going to be very fascinating because in the next couple of, I guess, month and a half, I think we're going to see the rhetoric dial up. You're going to see a lot more... Um, I don't know if we're going to see ideas or just promises from Nelson Peltz and company, and then we're going to have more, well, that's great, but why didn't you give them to this earlier kind of a thing from Disney, I think. And uh, I think Disney said they met with him 20 times and he never gave an idea, like a strategic idea. And, um, and like one time Bob Iger met with him in New York City or something and he didn't have any ideas. He just... I want changed kind of a thing, or I want different leadership. And, and, and that's, I guess, it's an idea, it's just not a strategic idea. <laughs> it's just like, a, oh, let's, let's just switch it out. Mm-hmm. And uh, so my big question is, Katie. Yes. Does Nelson Peltz and Jay Rasulo mm-hmm. end up on the Walt Disney Company board in a month and a half? I don't think so, to be completely honest. Um, mainly because... Because I just personally don't see what that would... What they bring to the table? Yeah, or like yeah. what they would accomplish. And I don't think Jay Rasulo has done anything in the last eight to ten years, however long it's been since he left the Walt Disney Company. Yeah. I don't know. I just, I think with things like this, um, it it is the never-ending cycle of Disney fans saying, no... That attraction re-theme or that hotel re-theme or this light post that changed was absolutely terrible and it's ruining my Disney experience. And you say, okay, well, what should it have been instead? And they go, I don't know. I just don't like this. Um, and it, it's not very forward thinking. It's kind of reactive. Um, and especially with a board of directors, you want there to be a lot of proactivity um, and a lot of forward thinking and forward movement um and so I I just don't see a way that that happens but also I've been wrong about so many things in the past who's to say so I don't think they're going to get on the board and I think it's because at this point I don't see an appetite for that big of change fair and I can remember when save Disney happened and there was kind of that last upheaval that was somewhat I think this is what Nelson wants it to be Mm -hmm. and there's just not that same appetite or momentum of like people being like, oh yeah, we need to save Disney and change things and get rid of whoever. Because like there, you know, Michael Eisner was in the firing squad at that time. And I just don't sense that for Bob Iger and the leadership of the Walt Disney Company. Like most of the people that the general populace does not like or did not like at the Walt Disney Company aren't there anymore. And the people that are left, I think there's still some grace to like, all right, let's turn this ship around. I think if if you don't see some things starting to happen 
in the next year. Because I think last year, Bob Iger's fixing everything. Mm -hmm. And this year, he's like, all right, we're going to start taking this thing for a ride again. Well, and it's, it's frequently the, the thing we see um, with the President of the United States is that the first half of their term, typically, is things from the previous president. And so I think that that's something actually kind of similar, is you inherit things from previous leadership, um, and there are choices that were made that you kind of have to either see them through or completely change course of action, um, which for a company as big as the Walt Disney Company, that can be very difficult because a lot of time it's uh, time, resources, uh, funds that have been put into things. And other leadership. And so um, I'm very excited to see what Bob Iger is going to do independently with, of course, he's still going to have things that he's inherited. Because um, you think he wasn't, he was only gone for three years? 18 months. <laughs> Got it. 18 months. But I mean, there was Bob, a lot of Bob things. Bob Chapek was already taking over before that. Yes. But. Um, but there was a lot of things that happened while he was gone. I mean, a lot of very fast decisions. Um, I mean, COVID was an interesting time for the Walt Disney Company. A lot of decisions got made. And so I just think it'll be very interesting to watch Bob Iger, like, independently make decisions going forward. And if he doesn't make the right decisions, then then we can call for change. But I think he's going to. And, I think so as well. I, I think it would have been very interesting to see him. I think at the end of the day... He stepped down because he needed a break, and he realized that. And maybe stepping down wasn't the right right choice for that. Maybe he needed to take a sabbatical and, and give somebody a chance to, to step forward and kind of almost be a trial run CEO instead mm -hmm. of just handing the keys over and, and not interim. really... Interim? Yeah. yeah. Well, kind of. Um, but um, I would have loved to have seen what he would have done in that crisis scenario. Cause I think he's really good in those kind of things as we've seen in the last year where mm -hmm. he's taken a different kind of crisis for the Walt Disney company and he simplified the company. He streamlined the company. And as we, we like to say, and we've heard a million times, simple is hard, but that's also where the gold is found. And, and so I think he's done a really good job of making things much more like if this happens, here's the you, the consequence, good or bad, mm -hmm. um, whether that's movies, parks, whatever. And we're already seeing some really cool things come out of that that we just wouldn't have seen otherwise. And I think it's just a matter of time. Movies take a little bit longer than some of the other things until we see some better Disney movies, some better, you know, Disneyland Ford is going to be fantastic, I think. Like, it's going to be exciting to see the the ideas and the possibilities that come out of this because instead of it coming, instead of coming at it, from the con uh, the concept of like how much can we throw at this thing mm -hmm. and maybe not have quite the quality Bob Iger's approach is I would rather do less and make it much better mm -hmm. um, where it's quality over quantity and so I think that's something that's consistent with the values that Walt Disney had years ago and when you focus on the quality at the end of the day you're gonna end up having like the money's going to follow on that because you're going to create good things. People are going to get excited about that. People like to be a part of something that's quality and the winning team, if you will. And I'm very curious to see how that plays out because we definitely still were getting movies this last year mm -hmm. that were from the Chapek era. Yes. At least that's what I'm going to say. Uh, I'm going to consider that, that era. And, um, and, you know, it would have been interesting to see how some of those movies might have been different in an Iger era. Mm -hmm. and But that's all past. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to look forward and we're like, oh, well, we've got one Marvel movie coming out this year. Which is kind of crazy. And it's Deadpool. <laughs> Which is... <laughs> Who would have guessed? Yeah. I mean, that's... That's, that's not even a traditional MCU movie. Like, no. they're, they're adapting it and bringing it in. But it's not the traditional, you know, Avengers timeline, whatever. Like, Although I am very excited to see Deadpool step closer to the MC. Right. Just and, and I'm excited to see Wolverine step in closer too. Mm -hmm. um, like I think there's so much potential there and I think that is going to be a home run for them. But you know we're just not getting the <clears throat> let's throw as much as we can at you thing. And um, and we've got Inside Out 2 which I think has a lot of potential this year. We've got the unnamed uh, or unknown animated feature in, in November, November which that I'm sure, I hope will be good. 
and it, and so you've got all of these things happening but not as much maybe as a year or two ago where it's like oh how am i going to keep up with this because there's two new movies a month it seemed like and and so with this change of tactics it'll be interesting to see the the outcome of that and i think it's really interesting too because when you think of a, of a strategy change that Nelson Peltz and Jay Rusulo are advocating for, I'm like, we're seeing a, a strategy change. Absolutely. Like it's, it's just a matter of time to see how the, the benefits or not come from that strategy change. So let us know in the comments what you think is going to happen with this board, well, shareholder meeting. And also let us know because one of the most fun parts of the shareholder meeting is the Q&A section at the end. And I want to know, what do you think this year's big out-of-the-box question is going to be? I think there's a chance it might be related to Country Bears. Okay. Usually it would be, uh, when is uh, Song of the South being released? But we haven't heard that one in a while. We also haven't heard People Mover in a while. We haven't heard People Mover. I can't remember what it was last year. But uh, let us know what you think or what would be fun, funny, I don't know, for the Q&A section of the... Uh, the annual shareholder meeting in April. What do you think that, that, I guess you call it like the traditional fan question. Like, it's sure. that kind of like, yeah, when's the Disneyland people mover coming? It's, it's the um, one that, that most people already know the answer for, but they're asking the question because they want to make the statement. That's, oh, that's what it is. Here's, <clears throat> here's one. I'll over, okay. I, I will even present it as if I am asking the question. Okay, go ahead. <clears throat> Hello, Mr. Iger. Thank you so much for taking my question. Um, I was just wondering, with the refurbishment coming to the Country Bear Jamboree in Magic Kingdom, when will we see that returning to Disneyland Park and replacing the many adventures of Winnie the Pooh? Mm. Thank you so much for your time. <laughs> oh, that was good. Um, you know where I would like to see Country Bears at the <laughs> Disneyland Resort, though? California Adventure? Grizzly Peak. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Put it across. Like, this might be a little bit... Redwood um, Creek Challenge Show. Yeah. Like, yeah. I know people like Redwood Creek, and you'd have to move, like, Raya and Santa and a few others. Yeah. But... That'd be such a cool thing. Yeah. And you think of like the amount of people that could go through there. Like, I don't know. Especially if this new show is, is very popular. Is popular. Yeah. Like, this would be, I just think there's nothing more California than the Country Bears. If you hear that question get asked, it was neither of us. Okay. And I'm... if Disney, you were thinking about this, we are taking no claim to it. Yeah. And the rights are completely yours. So keep moving forward with this. Yeah. We, we do not want to have anything to do with hindering any great ideas at Imagineering that may or may not exist. And um, so anything we come up with is, is, I'm sure it was already yours. And now you have us saying it on camera, so we can't... Uh, <laughs> yeah. We Legal can't, we Legally, can't... I have given up my right to my idea yes. that I just said. Just make magic for us. Um, we are happy with that. Do the magic, do the magic. Mm -hmm. um, and then, um, say at the end of... I'm trying to think of an attraction where this would work. Say say Interventions comes back um, and the building is turning again. I would love that. Do you know what that would be? A great big beautiful tomorrow. That would sure be moving people in mm. Disneyland, in Tomorrowland. Mm -hmm. That is true. So Disney could say, guess what? And then people they, mover. Then they could put the people mover back also and then we'd really be going somewhere. Um, I am looking forward to World of Motion returning or whatever they do with the... Uh, the uh, test track world of mm -hmm. motion thing. So I hope we get more details about that D23 and this year. The, um, the last shareholders call is where Bob Iyer is saying about the avatar experience at Disneyland, <laughs> that, correct? I think that might have been when he dropped that. Yeah. It might so... have been a call after that, but uh, it was around then. Yeah. So it, it's, it's always fun. We will be covering it. If we do it like we normally do, there will be a live blog where I will be covering it and giving you highlights. So if you aren't listening to it, then you can you can at least follow along if you're you're wherever you are um and, and usually we have a few people that, that hop in and chat and whatever and it's a lot of fun but uh that's that is all the time we have for you this week so katie what should people do go to dapsmagic.com check out all the disney and geek news as it happens subscribe to our mailing list and find our patreon because that is where behind the scenes photos and videos if they go up are going from this cruise. True. Uh, also make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We've got a ton of rainy day videos that we've been posting this week. We've got a lot of other things coming in the coming weeks, including, I think it's tomorrow. It might've been today. 
I can't remember. I should have looked at this first. The Jungle Cruise from Tokyo Disneyland mm. at night. Mm. It is amazing. You're going to love it. But that is all the time we have for you this week. So we will see you around the corner. Bye. Bye.